you'd be forgiven for wondering whether Pedri would have much left in the tank heading into Euro 2020. He played a lot of games. He only turned 18 early on in the season, but he quickly emerged as a key player for Ronald Koeman, eventually playing 52 matches in all competitions and playing over 3,500 minutes. All in all, national team commitments bumped up his appearance total to 59 games from Barcelona's first La Liga match of the season on the 27th of September 2020 until Spain's pre-Euro friendly against Portugal on the 4th of June 2021. That's roughly a game every 4.2 days. By the end of Spain's tournament, coach Luis Enrique was hailing Pedri, asking the press after their shootout defeat to Italy, did you see what an 18-year-old called Pedri did? Not even Andres Iniesta has done what he's done. I've not seen what Pedri has done at Euro 2020 from any 18-year-old in a Euros, a World Cup or an Olympics. I've never seen anything like it. It defies logic. But let's take a step back. Profiling Pedri for scouted in August 2020, the brilliant Jamie Kemp described the Spaniard as someone who wants to play every minute and always welcomes the ball at his feet. Jamie's bold prediction that, in the long term, only a career disaster will stop Pedri from becoming a key figure in Spanish football over the next decade really proved to be an understatement of how quickly he would rise to prominence both for Barcelona and, of course, the national team. So now let's take a look at Euro 2020. Pedri's main function in this Spanish side really evolved as the tournament progressed. In the opening group games against Sweden and Poland, the primary aim of Pedri's game was to function within the left channel, looking for passes inside and out, roughly from here, here, and here. Often, he would be looking for the marauding Jordi Alba, pushing onto the left wing from left back, as Sweden and Poland both clogged the central areas and really set themselves up to frustrate the Spanish with their low defensive blocks. An Italian coach, or someone that plays a little bit too much football manager, would label his role in the team as the mezzala, which is basically a central midfielder that will spend a lot of time operating in these kind of areas, combining with the left back from deep, but also drifting into the half space to join attacks and also create chances. And his numbers playing this role, particularly against Sweden, absolutely leap off the page. According to Statsbomb FB Ref data, against the Swedes, Pedri had 23 progressive carries, nine of which were into the final third, and he completed 104 of his 107 passes, of which 24 were played into the final third. But these numbers really overstate his influence. Many of the progressive passes into the final third were simple passes out wide to Jordi Alba in space, and the progressive carries were under very little pressure as Sweden tucked in deep and used the notoriously robust two banks of four to invite Spain in to attack them. What Pedri did show though, is that in a team of incredibly good technical players, he looked like the most technically strong of the lot. His touch is incredibly sharp, and he can wriggle out of just about any situation with his close ball control and agile frame. And of course, he has the passing game to match. His short to medium range passing is incredibly accurate, he fizzes his passes with intent, and he is not risk averse. He has an eye for a switch out wide to the opposite flank, and he has the technique to execute. And it appears as though Luis Enrique really saw all of this in Spain's first two matches, which they drew 0-0 and 1-1, and decided it was time to unleash Pedri. So, Rodri comes out of the starting 11 for the final group game against Slovakia, and into the team comes Pedri's Barcelona teammate Sergio Busquets. And now there's no denying that Slovakia were truly shambolic in this game, but Pedri really shone. Luis Enrique shifted Pedri into a new role, still nominally operating from the left, but with the freedom to roam the pitch and be a little bit more impactful. And the result, after 107 and 83 pass attempts in his first two matches, Pedri attempted just 51 against Slovakia. And here are the groupings of these passes, courtesy of who scored, with the matches against Sweden and Poland in orange and the match against Slovakia in blue. It's quite a distinct change, with Pedri receiving the ball and making more passes from a central position, particularly in what is called zone 14, the central space just outside the box, which is roughly here. And the result is that Pedri probably plays his best game of the tournament, delivering three wonderful pre-assists for all of the non-own goals that Spain scored as they went on to thump Slovakia 
The first is a delightful chipped ball to Gerard Moreno. It is a pass with an extraordinarily high degree of difficulty that drops just in time for Moreno to gather and line up his own chipped cross to Aymeric Laporte to head a home. The second goal highlighted that the synergy with Jordi Alba was still definitely there despite him operating from more central spaces. And for this goal, his exceptional vision is on display. Receiving the ball from the right flank, he either senses or somehow manages to see Jordi Alba, and we'll talk about scanning a bit later in the video, but he sees him making an unmarked run down the left wing, and he hits him with a pinpoint chipped pass, which Alba controls and delivers on a plate for Pablo Sarabia. Pedri's central positioning in this situation actually creates the space for Alba as he attracts the attention of Slovakia's right winger, while Gerard Moreno pins the right back inside the box. The third is a set piece routine, but it is also worth taking a look at, as well as all the other goals, and I've got a link to the video in the description. We could go into the knockout games as well, but for the sake of not doing a 30 minute video, we'll move on for now. But basically, Pedri was extremely good in all three knockout games, doing much of the same excellent work that he did against Slovakia, seeking out spaces to receive all over the midfield, but basing himself on the left-hand side. According to FBRF Statsbomb data, in these three games, he had 15 shot-creating actions. Uh, in the semi-final against Italy, he completed 61 of his 62 passes, including a killer ball in the first half that sent Mikel Oyathabal through, but he wasn't able to control it to take his chance one-on-one -on -one against uh, Gianluigi Donnarumma. But basically, he plays really, really well. To finish up, I want to go through some of the key attributes that elevates Pedri's game to an elite level. Let's start, maybe surprisingly, with some physical qualities. Uh, firstly, and we did talk about the volume of games he's played at the start of the video, but Pedri has a really, really big engine. After the semi-final stage of the tournament, he had covered 76.1 kilometers, which is more than any other player at the tournament. And not only that, at 10.9 kilometers covered per 90, he measures up really, really well against a bunch of other midfielders you might consider to be workhorses. So to compare, you've got Koke with 11.5 kilometers covered per 90, Nicolo Barella with 11.4, Calvin Phillips with 11.1, and Angola Conte with 10.6. And with three extra time periods played in a row in the knockout rounds against Croatia, Switzerland, and Italy, Pedri really didn't fade from any of those extra time phases and, and continued to contribute throughout. To segue forward, Pedri's running capacity also helps him to be a surprisingly good defensive asset. Against Italy, for example, he played an imperative role marking Jorginho and just really being near him, and this played an important role in nullifying his threat as Italy's conductor. The same Jorginho that bossed the quarterfinal against Belgium completed just 28 passes in 120 minutes against Spain and did not complete a single progressive pass. Pedri also excels in a few other areas defensively. One is that he is extremely good uh, winning the ball, tackling on the blind side of the ball carrier. And two, although this one is only really good if your system asks for it, but Pedri is a bit of a cheater when it comes to pressing. So to explain this, sometimes in low risk scenarios, he will try to win the ball back, not in the easiest way possible, but in the most advantageous way possible. For example, pressing this space here, hoping the defender comes inside, rather than pressing this space, knowing that the defender would generally be more likely to play the safer option down the line. We'll finish up with a couple of on-ball actions. Uh, firstly, Pedri is a frequent scanner of his surroundings. Uh, pretty much every single one of the elite ball players you can think of are really always constantly scanning the space around them as they prepare to receive possession. Pedri's Spanish teammate, Sergio Busquets, is another player that does a lot of this, and there's a really beneficial skill to have that helps a player both receive and then distribute possession. Uh, to demonstrate this, let's go back to that goal against Slovakia from earlier, where he senses Jordi Alba's running behind, except he doesn't sense the run. He does a quick head check as he is about to receive the ball, which allows him to take possession, take a quick touch, and then chip the ball over to Jordi Alba. This scanning gives Pedri an almost 360 degree passing range, rather than just receiving and then passing to what is in front of him. 
And next, we'll finish up with his disguised passing. Now, this one is a bit more specialized or unique to Pedri. So for this one, we'll go to another sequence with Jordi Alba against Slovakia. In this play, the situation, Pedri's body shape, and where he is looking all strongly suggest that he is going to cross the ball into the penalty area. Probably 99% of all players would. Uh, and the defenders nearby get caught out. Pedri winds up like he's going to cross, but quickly chops down on the ball as Alba makes a great run into the penalty area and goes on to almost set up a goal. To sum up, Pedri had an incredible tournament, one that was appreciated across the entire footballing spectrum, from the hardcore fan and detail-driven analyst to the casual observer and mainstream pundit. A player that 12 months ago was emerging in Spain's second division didn't just fit in or go through the motions, but was an essential cog in the machine. But we'll leave it there for today. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, leave a comment or subscribe. And if you really enjoyed the video, please check out the link in the description to buy a Scatter Football Handbook. It's our quarterly magazine where we profile some of the best young players emerging from all over the world.